Hello and welcome to the North American Guitar here in Fulham, London. And for this special edition of Talking Guitar, I'm joined by my friend John Thomas, Professor John Thomas, in fact, of uh, Quinnipiac University in Connecticut. Now, John is a world authority on all sorts of interesting things that pertain directly to us as guitarists. Uh, but for this particular video, um, we're going to be addressing the uh, slightly thorny issue of Brazilian rosewood. Um, current legal status, what to do with it, um, and uh, yeah, John, <laughs> what's happening with Brazilian Rosewood? Well, it's been an interesting tale. Uh, I'm one of the few people dumb enough to travel the world with a guitar carrying Brazilian Rosewood. This is an old 1943 guitar with Brazilian Rosewood fingerboard bridge. And also I have a law degree and teach law, so um, as I was wandering the planet, giving talks, playing gigs on occasion, started to occur to me that maybe I ought to know what the law would be on the substance that I was traveling around with. And so I began probably about a decade ago investigating, speaking on, and writing about the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species and its impact on musical instruments in general and in particular on guitars. Yes, indeed. So that's CITES for the uninitiated. Right. Yeah. Now, um, there is some confusion, certainly in my mind and, and in those of uh, people I've spoken to in the past, um, what happened in 2010 with the Lacey Act? So the U.S., as any other nation who was a signatory to the CITES Convention, also has to have implementing legislation in its nation. And the U.S. has a couple of different bits of law to implement uh, the CITES Act. A part of it is the Endangered Species Act, which covers mm -hmm. animals and plants, but in particular something known as the Lacey Act, which is an act we enacted in the U.S. 100 years ago, a little more than 100 years ago, but as you point out, in 2010, it was broadened to include a requirement of declaration for the import of anything, any product, any substance that contains something that once was alive, either plant or animal. And right. so for import, you have to have a declaration uh, of every substance that's on your instrument or car or whatever you're you're importing that was once living, how much of it, what the species is, in that particular, what particular place it is on the, on the object. So, for instance, that guitar, if you were to ship any of these lovely guitars, and by the way, it's a pleasure. <laughs> my first visit, it's a lovely shop. I followed Michael online, and we've met at many guitar gatherings around the planet. Um, lovely place. Any of these instruments, were you to ship them to these states, you'd have to have a declaration in the packaging listing every single piece of right. substance and how much it weighs, what, what, what it's, its mass is. Mm. If you don't submit the declaration, it's subject to seizure, at least temporarily, potentially permanently, until you make that declaration. And we've heard some horror stories about seizure, um, particularly uh, when you gave a talk uh, at the Healdsburg show, I think it was 2011. There was uh, an example of a pianist uh, that, that you told, what, what, do you want to repeat that? for? For you too? Right. It, it, it happened in about 2010, I think, a, a year or thereabouts, six months before I gave that talk. And I've forgotten the gentleman's name, but a very famous Russian pianist traveled with his personal Steinway that had been in his family for several generations. And he would disassemble it for legs and such, ship it over, reassemble it. And it, it landed in New York City at either the JFK or the Guardia Airport, I can't recall which. And our homeland security, our euphemism for the people who guard our borders since 9-11, um, thought it looked suspicious, it smelled strange, so they took it out on the tarmac and blew it up. Right. And there was nothing resembling a CITES substance on that piano at that time, but he had recently re-glued parts of it, so they thought it smelled strange. Okay, so, um, and this is quite alarming, isn't it? <laughs> it's alarming, and I published, a, I think we call it the Guitar Lover's Guide to the Convention on International Trade, Trade, in, International Trade in Endangered Species Societies for Fretboard Journal, I think it's 2009. Mm -hmm. And some people found it alarmist because I was a person who would say, this is what the law provides. It's rarely, if ever, enforced at this point in time. But you ought to know that if it is enforced, you could lose your instrument. And there were a number of guitarists and other musicians around the planet who were rather unhappy that I was willing to tell people what the law was. I wasn't making recommendations. I just this is the law, these are the forms. I pro we provided links online to forms, but people were very alarmed because largely ignorance may not have been bliss, but it was probably the next best thing. People travel with instruments. The convention was rarely enforced, but then enforcement started. The instruments started disappearing, sometimes permanently. The CITES provides for permanent seizure, uh, and that has certainly happened on occasion. I have talked to the people in the U.S. who are charged with housing the substances seized uh, when they're shipped into the U.S. 
And they've got a giant warehouse in Colorado, sort of the middle of the western part of the states, and have many musical instruments. They couldn't tell me how many, many musical instruments, most of which were seized for Brazilian rosewood, but the other potentially offensive substances are ivory. Elephant ivory. Yes, you know, elephant ivory, and in particular African elephant ivory, and also uh, sea, sea, um, hawksbill sea turtle shell. Yes. We call it tortoise, but it's hawksbill exactly. sea turtle shell, which was used originally in pick guards and uh, a little bit of ornamentation on a few instruments. Wow. Okay. So, um, as a guitar dealer here in the UK, um, I have had uh, some fairly worrying and worried uh, contacts with, with clients of mine who have invested uh, money in Brazilian rosewood instruments. And obviously these guitars sound wonderful, play beautifully in the main, and they are the sort of guitars that you know any one of us would be absolutely proud to own. And yet they are now being told that they might be in, uh, in possession of an illegal instrument, um, that, uh, that the market has shrunk exponentially uh, due to the fact that export is, is now such a, a pain. Uh, what can we do to reassure people like that? Well, let me break it down into two categories. One would be people, musicians carrying their instruments, mm -hmm. and second would be people, dealers like yourself or okay, individuals perfect. who want to sell instruments. So there were problems for a while with in, music, musicians traveling with instruments containing Brazilian rosewood in particular, but those other two substances we mentioned. But about a year ago, the U.S. and the E.U. implemented what is known as a musical instrument certificate or passport. And I actually have one right there here. There you go, one there. Um, this is the very first one issued from the States. I got it from U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife. It's an agency in the U.S. charged with enforcing CITES. You have a similar agency mm -hmm. in the EU. The EU has a very similar uh, passport. It's precisely the same form. Uh, one curiosity, post-Brexit, those uh, passport regulations were issued by the European Commission. So, should yeah. you follow through with this nonsense here in the EU, I mean, in the UK, I don't know what happens. But anyway, let's, <laughs> let's, let's suppose the law is as it exists. So, as a, as an owner of an instrument, you can get a passport. You can travel freely with it. Um, there are 186 or so countries who are members of the CITES Treaty. All of them recognize the passport. Every country is entitled to have its own version of the form, but you fill out the form, you can travel with it. Now, you can travel with it if you can demonstrate that your guitar is pre CITES. Mm -hmm. Brazilian was listed on the CITES Treaty, most uh, restrictive provision, Appendix 1, it's Appendix called, one yeah. in 1992. Mm -hmm. So you need to demonstrate that your instrument is pre 1992. And if you can do that, then you can get us do that to demonstrate to the uh, satisfaction of your authorities, you can travel with your instrument. It's relatively easy. Early on it was difficult. Um, if you have a Martin guitar, for instance, it's very easy based on serial numbers. If the serial number on the online database shows that it was made before 1992, you're golden. Um, this is an old Gibson. Uh, it has no markings on it whatsoever, but I was able to obtain through the officials a uh, passport just by a demonstration, an articulation of its age, of the characteristics that make it of that age, and then a description including a photograph. Mm -hmm. If you have a modern guitar, you're going to need documentation from the luthier who built it for you or the dealer who sold it to you. Typically, that would be original documentation coming from Brazil, but usually the U.S. authorities are willing to accept other forms of documentation, including things like affidavits or sworn statements from the luthiers that they bought the stuff before 1992. Okay. Before the material was listed on CITES, Nobody got documentation because it wasn't legally needed. Mm, yeah. So then we have luthiers all over the U.S., all over the EU, all over the world who have some legal wood that was harvested before 1992, but they didn't get a documentation because they didn't need it. So the authorities in most jurisdictions, most countries now, are accepting a description and a sworn statement from the builders or the sellers of the age of the wood. So you're good. Um, if you can prove that, and you can prove it either through serial numbers or other markings or through documentation from the builder or seller, it's relatively easy to get a passport. It expires after three years. You get it stamped as you go through uh, customs and that sort of thing, but it works fine. Mm -hmm. So that's one. If you want to sell an instrument over the borders, it's it, much more difficult. Let me talk first about selling it from here to the U.S., and then I'll talk yes. the other way around from the U.S. to EU. And other countries are um, have some of the variations on the theme, but the U.S. and EU are two models, and other countries you'll, in Asia and other places you'll find, if they enforce the treaty, follow one of these two models. So the U.S., you can import the instrument or export the instrument if it's pre-CITES. It has to be pre-CITES. 
the, the, the substance itself. It must have been harvested from the wild before 1992. It doesn't okay. have to be made into a guitar before 1992. It has to be harvested. And then you can ship it and you sell it. Um, if it has not been harvested, if you cannot prove that, you can't export it or import it. Done. Right. Okay. Now the EU is much more restrictive. So if that's from here to this, you, if you get a guitar here, you want to sell it through Michael, best dealer in the world. <laughs> um, Michael can get the documentation. He's, he actually knows a lawyer who would help him with this stuff. One or two, yeah. And you can sell it through the US. The other direction is very difficult. The EU is much more restrictive. The EU allows for the shipment import of Brazilian rosewood bearing instruments under two circumstances. The first is it's an antique. Mm -hmm. For purposes of EU regulations, that's pre-1947. So wartime and earlier, if you can prove that, it's pretty easy. Again, a Martin guitar, you've got the data in, on the mm -hmm. website. Other guitars, Gibson's, Larson Brothers, other guitars, it's a little more difficult, but it's, it's doable. Mm -hmm. So the first is you can import an antique pre-1947. The second is you can re essentially repatriate a Brazilian rosewood instrument. That is, if the instrument was made in the EU, you can bring it back in. Okay. So there are some steel string guitars made in the EU, obviously. Mm -hmm. You've got a few of them here. Um, not with Brazilian rosewood, I think, but with Brazilian rosewood. And of course, lots of classical guitars. So again, mm -hmm. there's the only two circumstances. Repatriate, was, was built in the first place, and you can prove that. Or you're uh, shipping in an antique. Okay. Those are to sell for commercial purposes. Mm -hmm. And again, you can travel with your guitar if you have a passport. So dealers in the US uh, pre-1992, into dealers into EU pre-1947 or repatriation, per personal musicians traveling with their own instruments, pre east 1992, and a passport. Wow. Okay, so what advice would you have uh, for people who are planning to travel internationally with a, a let's say, a modern Luthier-built guitar? So if you have a modern Luthier-built guitar, it's really unlikely that you'll have any of the banned substances or restrictive substances. It's possible you'd have, I've, unlikely to have ivory. Mm -hmm. It's possible you'd have tortoise shells, hawksbill sea turtle shell. It's possible you have Brazilian rose, but let's imagine you don't have those, but you have a nice, beautiful guitar. Um, you've got some lovely Coca Bolo and um, uh, ebony and other kinds of guitars that look, to my eye, and I've seen a lot of guitars, they look indistinguishable from Brazilian rosewood. So I think it's important if you're traveling with your guitar to have a list of the substances in your guitar mm -hmm. in your case. You yeah. have a list in your case of what your guitar c contains. Best to get it from the builder or the dealer. Signed, contact information. Very, very rarely, like one in a million maybe, maybe a little more than that. Very few times have I ever encountered anybody who stopped with an instrument. I've never been stopped. I've traveled internationally a lot, but on occasion it happens. So just have a description. The substances that are on it, you can show that you have contact information. If the customs officials become worried, they can contact the luthier or the dealer. And they'll, oh no, that's, that's uh, you know, modern mahogany, it's Cuban mahogany or whatever it is, not Brazilian sure. rosewood. Okay, and um, if, for instance, somebody had a, uh, a luthier built guitar from Brazilian rosewood that they wanted to travel with, does it just don't do it? Well, I, I get, get your passport. Right? Get your passport. If you, if you cannot satisfy your national officials that it is pre CITES Brazilian mm -hmm. rosewood, don't travel with it. Is okay. it likely you'll get caught? No. Does anybody, people rarely look in cases but once in a while it happens you don't want to lose your beautiful guitar for life so just don't travel with it okay wow <laughs> but there is a market right i mean and um i think a lot of the alarm has faded because of the ability to travel with your personal instrument both the u.s and eu through regulations have in the last decade really made it a little clear there are still a few areas that are uh, uh, unclear but right now it's pretty clear both for personal musicians carrying their instruments and for dealers. Wow. Yeah, so it, it has been a headache, which, you know, as to, from my point of view, it's, it's a real pity. Um, we've had some wonderful guitars here um, in the UK that uh, now their owners are starting to, to uh, no pun intended, but literally fret, uh, about, uh, about the future of, of that instrument, that relationship that they have with the instrument. Um, when it comes to, and this is a, a difficult one, because this, this is also something that, that people have asked me about, when it comes to forged paperwork from Brazil, when it comes to this idea of one large billet of wood uh, having its own paperwork and then becoming several sets that don't, 
Uh, what, how do we get around that? What do, what, what do you recommend there? Well, it's, it's a question of proof, right? So the, the officials in, in wherever country you live need proof. And they might accept a sworn testimony from the builder that I bought a big chunk of this in 1964 and sliced it up and I only made this for the last year because I saved it for 50 years. They might not. Um, so I think I wouldn't travel with it unless you can prove to the satisfaction of whoever's going to issue the documentation uh, that, that it is pre-CITES. Now you're going to need the documentation whether a passport like I showed or if you're shipping it internationally as a dealer or a seller, you still need CITES documentation. Cool. So I recommend applying for the documentation. If you can't prove it, don't send it. Again, you could ship it, and it's a good chance that you won't get caught. But if you get caught, you lost a Brazilian rosewood yeah. guitar. It, uh, I'm sure it's the same here in the EU and the UK as it is in the States. But there's a lot of wood out there that either has no documentation because people acquired it, at least they say, mm -hmm. before CITES, or there's a lot of wood with very questionable documentation. And it's very clear that until probably the last four or five years, that a lot of documentation was being forged in Brazil. Uh, people on the internet or would send to me because I became known as a person who's conversant in this stuff, would send me these official documents mm -hmm. that this is legal Brazilian Roseman. And the document had just been made up by somebody with a word processor. You know, it was a Microsoft Word document or a PDF of some form. So there's a lot of phony documentation. And um, you know, if you're, if you're conspiring the instrument for yourself, if you're morally comfortable with the, the purchase and what you think the impact is or is not on the environment, that's one thing. You can buy it. But if you have an ear either toward reselling it or traveling with it, I would contact the officials in my country, send them a photograph, a JPEG, of the document and say, is this legit? Wow. John, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> well, my pleasure to be here. Um, I need to, to uh, ally uh, the fears. This does have Brazilian rosewood, and I've traveled uh, around the world with it, mm -hmm. and I, I do think it's possible, but and again, if I don't need to talk about fun old things, I usually take a plastic guitar carbon fiber. <laughs> and it's a pleasure to be here. What a great shot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching.